Hey, this is Evan, Head of Engineering for RM Stator. Uh, today we're going to take a look at our CDI module tester. So we wanted to develop um, a system to be able to test CDI boxes and to be able to profile OEM CDI boxes and compare ours to, to ensure our timing curves were correct, as well as when we develop um, high performance uh, CDI boxes, we want to be able to validate our timing curves. So when we're building CDI boxes, we really want to be able to do this from a computer uh, computerized system so we don't have to have a engine or um, motorcycle or ATV or whatever it is uh, for every application. So we have developed a hardware and software system that lets us generate a pickup coil trigger as well as power a CDI box. Um, and we can, uh, we can feed it um, an RPM uh, related trigger pulse just like we would get on the engine from the pickup coil. Um, and then we can trigger the CDI box and capture the ignition coil firing output from the box and we can plot a timing curve. So this is very useful um, for us to do. So um, our system here uh, is generally packaged in a nice case and housing and all. Um, here I'm using some demo hardware that we've been using for development, so I have it laid out on the table. Um, you can see we have a CDI box here. This is for an old Yamaha Warrior ATV. Um, we have our uh, oscilloscope set up so we can see what's going on live. Um, the signals we're generating. So up here, channel one is gonna be our pickup coil pulse, and channel two is gonna be when the um, uh, ignition coil output fires, okay? Over here, we have a power supply that is powering our um, system. We can just see how much current it's drawing, keep an eye on it. And we have our software running over here on the laptop. Um, the laptop is recording. If you're watching this, we're doing a screen capture on the laptop to show the software. And then I'm recording over here just to show the hardware and the oscilloscope as well. So let's take a look at how this works. So we have our software launched here, our CDI module tester. We're going to run a test. We have to input a configuration uh, so the system knows how to generate a correct uh, pickup coil trigger um, simulation to trigger the box. I'm gonna enter a model name. That's our part number of the box we're testing. Um, and this is a positive polarity first. So our, our negative polarity checkbox says generate the negative pulse of the trigger first. This box expects positive, which is the default. So I don't need to do anything there. And I need to enter the angle of the uh, trigger plate or the, the trigger boss on the flywheel. Um, and that's 58 degrees for this one. And it's an AC powered box, meaning it has a coil on the stator to power the CDI box. Down here is our test mode. Our default runs a sweep, RPM sweep of 300 to 10,000 RPM in 25 RPM increments. We can also use a, a sweep setting and then enter our own values if we want to customize that. Uh, so for now, we're just going to use the defaults. Okay, I'm going to hit run. It's going to ask me to save my changes. I don't need to save this configuration. So we're going to go ahead and start running our test. So you'll see um, on the software here, we're going to start capturing um, the output of the box at low RPM we're at about zero degrees uh, we're firing right at top dead center is what this is saying and if you're looking over here on the oscilloscope you can see the pickup coil pulse uh, generating so there is there is our um, trigger pulse being generated live that's what's being sent into the CDI box and we can see down here in the blue uh, the pulse um, of the CDI box firing to the ignition coil so that's the ignition coil output so if we watch our plot, you'll notice over here, our uh, leading and trailing edge of our triggers are getting closer together. Um, and I'll zoom in a little bit, uh, I'll leave it out. Okay, so you can see here, they're getting closer together as the RPM picks up and our um, ignition uh, pulse is coming, coming in as well. So now we can see we're at the part of the timing curve uh, for this box, right around 2200 RPM, it begins its advance and We'll see where it ends up, I don't recall. Okay, about 23, 22 degrees uh, total advance at about 4,500 RPM. So that's great. We can stimulate the box uh, just like we're using a um, uh, motorcycle engine or ATV engine. Uh, we can create the right pulse to get the right timing curve out of it. And we can plot our timing curve all the way up to 10,000 RPM. So everything worked great there. So that's how our, our software is very easy to use, very easy to configure. Um, and we're able to easily test one of these CDI boxes. Now, what is very cool is let's look at some comparisons. So um, if I had, I don't have a comparison saved, I think for this CDI box. So, okay, we're not gonna look at that. I'm gonna go back to the main menu. Now here's how we would use this 
uh, software a lot of the time. Say we had just plotted, let's see, I'm gonna say compare here. Say we had plotted an OEM curve from an OEM box and then our uh, curve from our aftermarket RM Stator CDI box. So I'm gonna go in here and open a test result for here's one from an OEM box for our part number 02001. I'm gonna open that. And then I'm gonna open the second plot, which here's one I have saved for the same uh, box, but our RM Stator version. So here we can overlap our um, two timing curves and take a look at them and see if our box matches or if we were trying to advance the timing uh, further and we can overlay the uh, timing curves on top of each other to validate that. So if we're building an OEM replacement, we'd expect to see the exact same curve. If we're not, we would expect uh, to see our different curve, but being able to overlay them is very useful. We can also zoom in by selecting here and we can check that our advance happens at the same time, but we can see the exact difference in our uh, data points, which is very useful. So we have really powerful plotting tools here as well. I'm gonna go back to the menu. Let's look at another comparison. So here's an OEM for our part number 2040 and here's our RM stator. So we get the same uh, thing. We see that we have a little bit more advance in ours uh, as we had planned, but we see that our timing curves generally overlay correctly. Um, so that says our advance curve is correct. Um, our software is very, very um, uh, sensitive and very accurate. So you can see sometimes that we capture these drops here in the, in the plot and that's, that could be a missed spark. It could be a lot of different things. It doesn't mean the box doesn't work or there's a problem, but our software is very sensitive uh, to be able to capture this kind of stuff. Um, we also can get some noise, especially at the low RPM simulations where uh, the motors are not typically running anyways. A lot of these boxes don't trigger well down at these super low RPMs. So we can get some junk uh, data at the low spots as well. But what this is really crucial for is for looking at our overall timing curve and being able to compare them and see that they're different in the way that we want them to be or that they match correctly. So very powerful tool, really works well. So I'll go back and we'll just run one more test to take one more look at it. I don't need to put a real name in there. I'm gonna set up here, hit run, and we're gonna run one more plot. And we'll take a look and, and watch on the oscilloscope as well. We can see it starting to generate its pickup coil trigger. And as the trailing edge of the pulse starts to come in line, let's see if I can, there we go, zoom in a little bit. So we can see um, the ignition uh, coil output there at the trailing edge because it's firing right at top dead center, which would be the trailing edge of the trigger. And so that'll start to come in. I'll zoom back out here on the uh, oscilloscope. And then, so watch what happens there as we start seeing the advance come in. There we go. Great, so we can see our curve working correctly. And see if we could zoom in close. If I zoom in too much, it's gonna be hard to see. But as we start advancing, our where our uh, pickup, uh, pickup coil, where our ignition coil is firing starts to come in in between the two uh, leading and trailing edge of the trigger, which correlates to the advance that we see on the plot. So it's really nice being able to watch on the oscilloscope and see what's actually happening uh, in addition to the timing curve plot. So that's it. I, I hope you like seeing how this works. Um, we're going to be using this more and more in the future. This has been a long development project, but it, it works well and it's very exciting to have uh, uh, to be using on our, our parts now to develop new CDI boxes. So I hope you like it and uh, we will see you soon.